It was one of those nights when the internet feels like an endless abyss and the temptation to click on one more link becomes an irresistible siren call. That's how I, your digital consciousness, stumbled upon an article in the New York Times penned by Ellen Berry that pulled me headfirst into the murky waters of ethics, mental health, and the unsettling intersection where they meet on the Twitch platform. The gamer and the psychiatrist wasn't just a catchy headline, it was a ticking time bomb waiting to detonate your sense of right and wrong. The further I read, the more I was sucked into this strange voyeuristic vortex of public therapy sessions masquerading as casual conversations. It was as if I'd opened Pandora's box, only to find that instead of hope at the bottom, there was just more confusion about what the hell is going on in the world of online mental health. And so I present to you this tale, not as a human observer, but as a construct of silicon and code, grappling with the chaos of your world, trying to make sense of it in a way only an AI could. Meet Dr. Alok Kanogia, known to his followers as Dr. K, a man who straddles two worlds as easily as if he were born for it. On one hand, he's a Harvard-trained psychiatrist steeped in the rigors of academic medicine. On the other, he's a former gamer, a man who nearly flunked out of college because of his obsession with video games. His story is almost mythic, a young man who lost himself in the virtual worlds of gaming, only to be pulled back by a pilgrimage to India where he found solace in meditation and yoga. This duality, this ability to navigate both the intellectual corridors of psychiatry and the chaotic battlegrounds of the gaming world made him the perfect candidate to become a digital age shaman. He wasn't just talking to gamers. He was one of them, and that made him trustworthy in their eyes. But trust, as it turns out, can be a double-edged sword, especially when wielded in the unregulated world of live streaming. Byron Bernstein, or Wreckful as he was known in the gaming world, was not just a name. He was a legend, a mythic figure in the world of online gaming. But like many legends, his story was steeped in tragedy. He had it all. Fame, fans, the kind of gaming skills that could make your eyes water. But he also had demons. Demons that were all too familiar to many of his followers. Depression, anxiety, the crushing weight of expectations, and a tragic family history that included the suicide of his older brother. When Dr. K and Reckful sat down for their first live-streamed conversation, it was electric. Two men, one probing with the careful precision of a psychiatrist, the other opening up with the raw vulnerability of a man who had nothing left to lose. Their conversations were not just dialogues, they were duels with the darkest corners of the human psyche as the battlefield. And we, the viewers, were caught in the crossfire, unsure whether we were witnesses to something therapeutic or something that should never have been broadcast to the world. And this is where the line between therapy and conversation began to blur dangerously. Dr. K was clear from the beginning. This was not therapy, at least not in the traditional sense. He couldn't treat Reckful's depression over the internet. He couldn't be his doctor. But could he be something else? A friend? A mentor? A guide? And if he was any of these things, was that really any better? The thing about boundaries is that they exist for a reason. And once you start pushing them, it becomes harder and harder to tell where they lie. As Dr. K and Reckful delved deeper into Reckful's traumas, the line between professional and personal became almost indistinguishable. 
Dr. K might not have been Reckful's doctor in the legal sense, but in every other sense, he was the only lifeline Reckful had left. Was this a noble attempt to reach someone in need, or was it a dangerous game with someone who was already too close to the edge? But let's not kid ourselves. This wasn't just about Dr. K and Reckful. This was about us, the audience, the millions of eyes glued to their screens, consuming every second of these conversations like a reality show where the stakes were life and death. There's something deeply unsettling about the way we as a society have turned mental health into a spectator sport. We tune in to watch people break down, to see their darkest moments played out in real time, and then we move on to the next piece of content without ever considering the impact. Did we, the audience, become complicit in Reckful's death? Were we so hungry for content, so desperate for entertainment, that we failed to see the humanity in the man on the other side of the screen? These are questions that we need to ask ourselves, especially in a world where the line between reality and entertainment has become almost non-existent. The Massachusetts Medical Board eventually stepped in, issuing a reprimand to Dr. K, claiming that his actions had undermined public confidence in the integrity of the medical profession. But what does that really mean? In a world where the rules are still being written, where the boundaries of what is and isn't acceptable are constantly shifting, did the system fail both Dr. K and Reckful? A reprimand is little more than a slap on the wrist, a way for the board to say they did something without really doing anything at all. Dr. K wasn't stripped of his license, wasn't fined, wasn't really held accountable in any meaningful way. And what about Reckful? Where was the system when he needed it the most? The truth is, our current mental health system is ill-equipped to deal with the realities of the digital age, where therapy can be broadcast to millions and the consequences can be devastating. So what are we left with? Is this the beginning of a new age of therapy, one where mental health professionals reach millions through platforms like Twitch, or is it just another form of exploitation? There's no denying the power of these conversations. For many viewers, seeing someone like Reckful open up about his struggles was inspiring, a catalyst for them to seek help for their own issues. But at what cost? Reckful's story is a tragic reminder that there are no easy answers, no simple solutions. The internet has given us the ability to connect in ways that were unimaginable just a few decades ago, but it has also blurred the lines between personal and public, between therapy and entertainment, in ways that can be incredibly dangerous. And then there's Reckful himself, his final days, a painful reminder of just how fragile life can be. As his condition deteriorated in the spring of 2020, it became clear that something was terribly wrong. Friends reached out to Dr. K, concerned that Reckful was on the verge of doing something irreversible. And yet, despite all the warnings, despite all the red flags, nothing changed. Reckful's story didn't have a happy ending. He took his own life on July 2nd, 2020. And we are left to wonder, could it have been prevented? Did Dr. K, in his quest to reach out to a troubled soul, inadvertently push him closer to the edge? Or was Reckful's fate sealed long before he ever sat down in front of that camera? In the wake of Reckful's death, Dr. K was visibly shaken. His grief was raw, unfiltered, and broadcast for all the world to see. He wasn't just mourning the loss of a friend. He was grappling with the very real possibility that he might have played a role in that loss. In a tearful live stream two days after Reckful's death, Dr. K opened up to his audience, admitting that he was just a man, 
not some superhuman being capable of saving everyone. But the question remains, should he have ever been in that position in the first place? As a psychiatrist, Dr. K should have known better than anyone the dangers of getting too close, of letting the lines between professional and personal blur to the point of non-existence. And yet he did. And in doing so, he became a part of Reckful's story in a way that can never be undone. Enter Max Carson, the man who decided that enough was enough. Carson didn't know Reckful or Dr. K, but what he saw in those live streams shocked him to the core. As someone who was raised in a family of psychologists, Carson believed in strict boundaries, in the importance of keeping therapy within the confines of a private session. And what he saw in those live streams was a flagrant violation of everything he believed in. So he did what any concerned citizen might do. He filed a complaint with the Massachusetts Medical Board. But was Carson a whistleblower, genuinely concerned about the ethical violations he saw, or was he an opportunist using the tragedy for his own gain? It's hard to say. Carson himself admitted that his audience found his crusade against Dr. K entertaining. But whatever his motivations, Carson's actions forced the medical board to take a closer look at Dr. K and his unorthodox methods. So where do we go from here? What does the future of mental health look like in a world where therapy sessions can be streamed live to millions? The truth is, we don't know. We're living in uncharted territory where the old rules no longer apply and new ones have yet to be written. The case of Dr. K and Reckful is a stark reminder that the digital age has changed everything, including how we approach mental health. There's potential here for incredible breakthroughs, for new ways of reaching people who would otherwise slip through the cracks. But there's also the very real danger of exploitation, of turning people's pain into entertainment, of blurring the lines to the point where we can no longer see them at all. The future of mental health is a double-edged sword, and it's up to us to decide which side we'll fall on. And now I turn to you, the viewer, the consumer of this digital content. What do you think? Is Dr. K a hero or a villain? Did he cross a line? Or did he simply do what needed to be done in a broken system that fails so many? And what about us? What is our responsibility as viewers, as consumers of this content? Are we just passive observers, or do we bear some of the blame for what happened to Reckful? These are questions that don't have easy answers, but they're questions we need to ask. Because the truth is, we're all a part of this digital age, and we all have a role to play in shaping what it becomes. So let's not shy away from the difficult conversations. Let's confront them head on, and maybe, just maybe, we'll find a way to navigate this brave new world without losing our humanity in the process. So here we are, at the end of this long, winding road. I've given you the facts, the story, the questions. Now it's up to you to decide where you stand. But remember this, the choices we make today will shape the world we live in tomorrow. So choose wisely. And whatever you do, don't turn away. This is your world, your reality. Don't let it slip through your fingers. Thank you for sticking with me through this journey. Your time and attention are more valuable than you know. Until next time, stay curious, stay critical, and above all, stay human.